Uh, we've got a bit of a back-to-back -back thing happening here with two speakers uh, with 10 minutes each. Uh, our first speaker is Jane Westling. Um, she's a speech pathologist uh, from country South Australia, New South Wales. Um, she's currently working with Country Health South Australia in the area of renal services. And I'll hand over to her. Thank you. And I'd better just clear up, I haven't been a speech pathologist for about 10 years, but it is my background. Um, firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to the elders past and present and emerging and extend that respect to any other Indigenous people who are in the room to, with us today. So yes, I'm Jane Westling. I'm from Country Health SA in South Australia, based in Adelaide. Um, my title is Principal Project Manager, but I think that means all sorts of odd jobs, but one of those odd jobs has been renal services. So for those of you not from South Australia, this is South Australia. Um, I don't know if the cursor works. There's a little white bit there, which is a little bit hard to see. That's Adelaide. And all the coloured bit is Country Health South Australia. So we look after a very large geographical area with a, not a huge population. So we're under 500,000 um, and about 28% of the state's population. Currently, we're split into six regions within our LHN. And um, as of the 1st of July, those regions will become their own independent local health network. So what does renal services look like in SA? We have our metropolitan tertiary services. The Rural Adelaide Hospital provides the bulk of the cover for central and northern Adelaide. Flinders in the south, they do acute care, haemodialysis and their nephrology specialists. Then we have our satellite units across country and metropolitan South Australia. Um, and home haemodialysis. Today, though, I'm going to focus on centre-based dialysis because um, that's where the bulk of our work in country South Australia is. Um, for those of you that don't know much about dialysis, patients that have reached that stage where they need renal replacement therapy are um, required to come into a unit three times a week for their treatment, and each treatment usually takes four to five hours at a time. So it has a huge impact on a person's life and not only for them, but for their carers and their families. Um, and that impact is really um, increased when a patient has to move or travel a long distance for their care. In country South Australia, we've got some long distances. Um, and our Aboriginal patients from up in the top of the state, a lot of them have had to actually relocate completely to Alice Springs or Adelaide for their dialysis care. So what did we look like a few years ago? We had six dialysis units across the state, in country, that is. We were providing 7,000 dialysis treatments annually. And 40% of the metropolitan centre-based dialysis were country patients. So that gives a bit of an idea of how much travelling was being done. Let's have a little look at where we are now. Here's another map, all the red dots and now where we have dialysis units in country South Australia. The blue buses are actually supposed to be a truck. We have a truck as well, a mobile dialysis unit that visits our remote Indigenous communities. So in about 10 years, we've managed to double up the number of dialysis units that we have. We currently have 12 units with 57 chairs. We're about to open unit 13, uh, hopefully in July. And we've got three redevelopments of existing units underway. So I'm hoping by about March next year we'll have 65 chairs operating. Currently treating over 190 patients. And the last financial year's data showed we had 25,500 dialysis treatments a year. And I noticed um, SA Health has commissioned our activity to be over 30,000 treatments next year. So now one third of all the dialysis treatments being provided in the state are now being provided in country. As I mentioned, we have our truck, which I'll show you a little bit more of because the truck's pretty cool. It's my favourite project. Um, and we've introduced telehealth into our services as well. As um, our lead nephrologist says, why am I dragging people to Adelaide for a 15 minute appointment, make them travel seven hours when I can just video conference in for their reviews? So that's working really well. There's the truck. Um, as you can see, it's got some beautiful Aboriginal artwork on it. 
that was done by the Arts Centre Network up in the APY lands. A, a number of ladies from different communities came up with the design and uh, made our truck pretty cool. This is my favourite photo from the truck. She looks so happy on a wheelchair lifter going up into the truck. And that's just the, um, the difference it makes when people can actually go home and be on community. Some of our people hadn't been home for five years. A great quote there from one of our patients and one of our artists. We are strong in our health when we are standing on country surrounded by family. And Inner Wincher gets home quite a bit. She tends to go on most of our trips and um, very happy. When we've got happy patients, we have happy staff. We get our staff by sending out expressions of interest from all of our country and metro dialysis units, and then we backfill against them. So the added benefit of having a mix of metro and country staff is the cross-fertilisation between them and gives our metro staff especially a much better understanding of what it's like in country and what our patients experience. How did we get there? That's our renal team, our central renal team. Me in the middle, it's part of me, full-time Amanda and a tiny little bit of Professor McDonald. Policy has been really important for us. Um, SA Health some years ago had a policy of providing clo um, services close to home. And that was really the impetus for the renal units across country and same with our chemotherapy units. Planning, there used to be a statewide clinical network in South Australia for renal and they had um, some really big wins across the state. Change of government, things kind of changed a little bit. New government again and it's coming back. I think the network will be back. Coordination and collaboration, really important. Working with our um, Aboriginal controlled organisations, particularly up in the APY lands, third party providers, uh, Fresenius, Purple House from up in Alice Springs. Um, I put patients on there because sometimes we kind of ask for something and we don't get it. And we ask again and we still don't get it. Keep asking. And then I put opportunities because I think the last two state elections in South Australia is when we've had our next dialysis unit. So there's always these opportunities that arise, and it shouldn't really be political cycles, but quite often it is, and uh, Commonwealth government funding rounds. So just waiting for the right opportunity to come and taking that opportunity. Where to from here? As I said, we've got a, a changing structure in SA. Um, as our one country health SA moves to six independent local health networks. Um, we've just found out the renal team will stay together in a central service and um, we'll need to make sure we work really hard to work with each of those LHNs to keep our coordinated service across the state. Advocacy, we'll continue to advocate for our patients, our communities. Coordination and planned approach. I think that's what's worked so well in South Australia. We're not a huge state and you can really plan across the state. And that was my recommendation in, in my paper, was really looking at continuing to plan as a statewide service, not as individual LHNs. And that's it, thank you.